everyone, it's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to do a, just let's be honest, a complete gush review for The Final Strife by Sara El Arifi. This is a new release that just came out on June 21st of 2022 and it is inspired by Ghanaian folklore and Arabian myths. As soon as I saw the cover, I wanted to read it because the cover is just stunning. So in this world, um, this huge event happened, which caused uh, this population to move to this island. And when they got to this island, the elite created the Warden's Empire and created a new class system. So in this group we have or in the system we have three different groups of people. One are the embers who have red blood. They're the ones who can do blood work, which is part of the magic system, and they are in control of everything. We also have dusters who have blue bloods, and dusters are the poor, um, working class, and members of the resistance. And we also have people with clear blood who are known as ghostings. Ghostings are slaves, um, invisible people, as in shunned from society, um, and just basically the lowest of the low in this society's vision. And ghostings actually have their hands and tongues cut off so that they can't speak um, and basically can't rise out of their situation. So they've created their own language, which I thought was a really cool inclusion in this world. And it's a very harsh environment. It's a desert environment. There's blue sand and it just really fit in, I feel like, with the the Warden's Empire and how things are very brutal and harsh. And there are even things called tide winds where um, at certain parts of the day the wind is so strong it can actually rip the skin off your body, which was brutal to read about, but I thought that was a really interesting world building element because I have not read that before. So I think we have three main characters. I think a lot of reviews say there's two, but our two that are most focused on in the book, there's Sila. She has been told that she would spark a revolution that would free the empire from the embers and their tyranny. And that dream kind of died the day she watched her family get murdered. Um, then we have Anur, who is very privileged and is part of the Embers class. Her mother is a very, very powerful woman. And she has always been told that she's nothing. Nothing she does is ever good enough. She's always a disappointment to her mother. And... She's being told this by the only person in her life that matters to her, her mother. So I really, I really just felt for her. But one day through a set of circumstances that occurs, um, Sila and Anor meet. We also follow a character, Hasa, who is a ghosting. She is basically invisible to society. You know, people don't pay attention to her. She's a slave. Um, but she, because nobody pays attention to her, has secrets and access to secrets, and these secrets can reignite a revolution. She joins forces with Sila and Anor, and things go from there. I also really, really loved the magic system. It's blood magic, so users, you know, actually use their own blood. But with their blood, they write these runes to do whatever kind of magic they're trying to do. But I thought it was really interesting how it's kind of a hard magic system. Like, 
you can't use too much or you'll you know burn yourself out and everything has to be set up in a very specific way so the rune magic is very structured and if you don't do it exactly right the magic may not work or it may not work the way you want it to work and it's just a very high stakes system in my opinion i thought the class system excuse me the cast system that they have set up in this world i thought it was really interesting that they use the color of your blood to help determine that i've never seen that in at least any books that i've read and it's a very very brutal cast system you know you just have the elite that are all the way at the top don't have to worry about anything they control everything and then you have you know the dusters they're poor so there's already a huge gap and then you have the ghostings who were slaves and you know are forced to go through amputation and can only communicate through um you know like a sign language that they've made up and just taking away their their autonomy over their own bodies it's brutal um, but i thought it was really interesting how the author explored that and you know just thinking about our world and how so many things that are happening in this book are so relatable and relevant to the time we're in and again you know it's based on the color of your blood not your skin color or um, your ethnicity or your sexuality or anything like that which I thought was a really interesting twist um, and I love that being queer is just a thing it's like a non-issue which is so nice to see and also um, we also have trans characters or non-binary um, Hasa is a trans character and it's not outwardly stated like she doesn't say I am trans but um, through the details that the author provides in the story and her interactions with other people you learn this and I just thought it was very organic how it was weaved in and again it's just a non-issue which is fantastic in this world we also have this competition called the Actibar and it's a set of trials that are held every decade and the goal is to find the next wardens for the empire so when we first meet Sila, she's addicted to joba seeds which are drugs in this world and you can see her just really struggling and doing anything she can to get a hold of these seeds and she's built up a huge tolerance she is a fighter so she's been trying to get into the Actabar because it's going to help her cause she thinks she is destined to win and then she gets um meets anor and things go awry and sila misses signing up for the Actabar. so she ends up helping anor it was so good and the trials were just very grueling and stressful but i had i hate to use the word such a good time but it was very compelling and i needed to know what happened um the book starts off kind of slow because it is set up but i don't feel like it's info dumpy in any way through the setup we do really get to know sila as a character and learn about how she interacts with the world around her and that will lead us to better understand the world itself and then we meet characters along the way and it just felt very organic i was hooked from the very beginning all the way to the end i think i read this in two or three days i was sad that i had to work because i did not want to put it down it was so freaking good it also had some really good tropes uh friends to lovers and the chosen one trope things like that but i liked that we have these tropes but she twists them in a way that i wasn't expecting so it kept me on the edge of my seat and i love it when when an author can twist a trope i just 
it's just so masterful the way she crafted it. And I really liked um, the exploration of characters and character development. When we first meet Anor, she's very privileged and just whiny, like she actually stamps her feet when she doesn't get what she wants. Uh, just someone you don't want to be around because they're just annoying and privileged and just completely clueless about the world around them. Um, but through her friendship with Sila and uh, preparing for the Actabar, you really see her grow as a person and learn about the dusters and the ghostings and how the world isn't perfect like she thought it was. And I really appreciated, number one, just the fact that she grew as a character. Uh, she didn't just stay where she was just to win. And I also really appreciated um, the emphasis on changing your mind once you have new information. She finally sees the struggles that other people have in this world that she just had no idea existed. And I appreciate that I've actually changed her as a person instead of just her blowing it off like I feel like she could have. It just really added some nice depth to the story. This does explore a lot of different themes and so there are some trigger warnings. Um, drug abuse, drug addiction, there's graphic violence. Um, the magic is blood magic so there's going to be blood. Death of children and family. Grief. And there's also child abuse. It's not explicitly stated on the page but it's mentioned and um, it's talked about especially the verbal abuse um, so just you know keep that in mind in case it's triggering but I thought even though I can't attest to all of these I thought the author handled them well and especially the drug addiction I felt like that was really realistic. Sila is such a nuanced character. She's very flawed. Um, she's sick with this drug addiction. And um, at times you don't like her because of that. And I think that's so realistic. How you can love someone but still not like them for or like their actions. Um, I really, really appreciated that. And I really loved seeing how Sila dealt with her addiction through the circumstances she was put in um, it was it was nice to see so this has kind of been rambly and gushy but I just love this so much and I knew I would like it but I really I really didn't expect to love it as much as I did and as soon as I finished it. I really just wanted to drop everything and start it all over. It's one of those books that I can see myself rereading in the near future. Uh, it was just fantastic. It was so fantastic. So please read it if you have not already. The audiobook narrator is phenomenal. I think they did a great job of differentiating the characters and um, you know genders and everything. I just think it was fantastic. So I obviously gave this five out of five stars. If I could give it more, I would. <laughs> it's one of my favorite reads of the year for sure. So have you read it? If so, please let me know or let me know if you plan on reading it. Um, if you wanna leave an emoji, drop a desert related emoji, whether it be landscape, animal, what have you. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you'd like. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.